There are reports this morning that Libya's rebels have reached the outer suburbs of Tripoli as they advance on the capital from three fronts. Colonel Muammar Gaddafi has gone on State TV to say he will not abandon the city, but the rebels say they're confident his 41-year reign is heading for collapse. I'm joined by Robert Patman, Otago University's Professor of International Relations. Good morning, Professor. Good morning, Rachel. Are we seeing a defining moment in Gaddafi's reign unfolding here? Well, all the signs are that the rebels have made significant progress in the last two weeks. So that's certainly, they now seem to be on the outskirts of Libya's capital. And indeed, there were reports overnight uh, that about 200 rebels had actually landed via the sea in the harbour area of uh, Tripoli. So we seem to be set now for a grand battle for Tripoli. Now, Colonel Gaddafi may be co more confident that he can hold his own in the complex urban environment where he cl clearly has quite a lot, lot of support. This is a city of 1.5 million people. Uh, we've just actually heard an update here. Professor Sky News is saying that the rebels are now in Tripoli with no sign of resistance. They're about uh, 10 kilometres from the city centre right now. We know that Gaddafi mm. has uh, been on Libyan State TV on the phone this morning calling on people to rise up against the rebels. Why do you think he won't concede defeat? And effectively save his life? Well, it may be more of the sort of delusionary sort of behaviour that Gaddafi has demonstrated throughout this crisis. He, he never really seriously seemed to have entertained uh, a negotiate, a sort of uh, an exit from the situation. He wanted a negotiated settlement essentially on his own terms. And, uh, you know, I suppose it's the strength and weakness that he's often uh, he's often persisted when the odds seem hopeless, and he has actually. Many people thought he would, you know, the regime would collapse back in March after the rebellion started in February, and, he, and we're still talking about it these months later. So, I suppose he's hoping to rally his uh, loyalists in Libya, and, and quite frankly, when a regime depends, Rachel, so much on one person as the Gaddafi regime does, if the person at the top is seen to lose their nerve, then you could have a quick collapse. So he's probably trying and calculating that if he can keep up a, you know, a brave front, then at least that will help rally some of the waverers amongst his camp. Does he have any other options open to him, Professor? The silence is deafening from the international community, isn't it? Well, uh, it, yes and no. The, the silence recently has been uh, noticeable, but in the last week we've seen significant developments with the, uh, the, the Mr President Obama and Hillary Clinton come, you know, definitively saying he's got to go. France has said the same thing. Uh, he, there doesn't seem to be any significant international support uh, for Colonel Gaddafi. At the same time, it's not clear exactly where he would go. Now, that doesn't mean there's not negotiations going on privately that uh, he's, you know, some sort of exit plan for him. Uh, he won't advertise it. He's hanging on. His family hopes he can stay in power. But that doesn't mean there's not a bolt hole uh, in sight. America took a very strong line at the start. They were heavily involved and then at the start of the uprising and then pulled back and handed over to NATO. Is America deliberately uh, keeping a low profile now, do you think? Well, I, I think President Obama ha has taken the line, uh, which is consistent with his o overall global strategy, uh, that America has two wars on its hands in both Afghanistan and Libya. Uh, the one in Afghanistan is proving particularly challenging. And also that his position is that America's allies and partners have to do their bit alongside America in dealing with security problems. And I think he felt after taking a lead and then effectively handing over to NATO that he got the ball rolling. What was many people, I was in the United States last week, and many people thought it was very significant that the Obama administration, after a long period of so relative silence, had definitively said to Gaddafi, You've got to go. And that was made clear by the Secretary of State and the President himself. So if Gaddafi's regime is overthrown, where to for Libya? Well, I think that's what the NATO chiefs worry about. What they want to avoid uh, is a sort of Iraq scenario where there's a sudden collapse of the regime, and it could happen, particularly in the, the reports that you just uh, related, uh, with the rebels entering about five, 10 kilometres into the city. Um, they don't want a situation where there's a power vacuum and brutal infighting and revenge killings. And I know that uh, there is some reports that NATO chiefs have been in close discussions with the rebels to try and make sure there's no revenge killings and that there's a relatively smooth transition. Now, that, those discussions will be put to the test, of course, in the near future if Colonel Gaddafi's regime does crumble. All right, Professor Robert Patman from Otago University, thanks very much for your analysis this morning. Thank you.